Sleep night, shirt sure, isn't a chill down your spine. Welcome to Creep Night. I hope you all are having a Merry Christmas. In today's episode, we're going to have a merry, scary Christmas. So pay close attention, boys and girls, because this might relate to you. Christmas was supposed to be the happiest holidays in the year, but for some reason, this year, my brother Austin and I just could not get along. Our parents had warned us that if we did not behave, that the coal man would come and he would climb down our chimney and punish us. This was not the first time we had heard this, nor would it be the last. A few days before Christmas, Austin and I were helping our parents decorate the house with Christmas decorations and all, and of course we fought over who got to put the star on the tree. It got so bad that our mother shouted, If you two do not stop fighting, I promise you that the coal man will come down that chimney and do you want to know what he does to naughty misbehaving children? We stopped and looked at her, waiting to hear the full story of the coal man. Our mother put her hands on our hips and told us to sit down because this story was going to be long. As you know, the coal man climbs down the chimney looking for the misbehaving children. How does he know which ones are bad, you might be asking yourselves? Well, Santa deals with the good children and leaves them toys and treats. But for the misbehaving children, he places coal in their stocking. So that way the coal man knows which children he gets to punish. Boring, we both had shouted. Hush now and let me finish the story. We rolled our eyes and let her continue her story. The coal man looks at the coal that was placed in the stocking for the naughty, misbehaving children. Then he creeps up to the children's rooms. The children get all excited because they think it's St. Nicholas come to see them and greet them with presents and treats. They jump out of bed and rush to their doors and throw it wide open. To their horror, it is not Santa standing behind that door. It is the coal man standing there to greet them with his bright red eyes and his sharp white rigid teeth. His dark claws stretched out to grasp the children. We asked our mom, what about the parents? Wouldn't they hear the children screaming? But my mom shook her head and replied, That is the worst part of it all. While the parents are sleeping soundly in their beds, dreaming of sugar plums dancing in their heads, they do not or cannot hear their children screaming. I shook my head and laughed. <laughs> This story sounded so silly to me. How could a parent not hear their children screaming? I asked my mom, wouldn't they notice that their children were gone? That is the second worst part of this story. After the children go missing, it is like the coal man has placed this spell where the parents don't remember having any children. So I warn you now, especially before Christmas, stop your fighting and be good little children. Austin and I shook hands in agreement that we would make a truce. We joked about the coal man getting us. 
Ooh, you better watch out, or the cold man will get you. I laughed when he had said this to me because we both had not taken the story seriously. Our mom shook her head and threw her arms up in the air. Christmas Eve, we helped our mom make cookies and even set out a plate of chocolate chip and a tall glass of eggnog for Santa Claus. We made sure our stockings were hung up in the right spots. Our mom smiled. Our mom's smile would soon fade as Austin and I were arguing and fighting each other. Our mom came running into the room and had seen the TV smashed on the floor. She became so angry, she sent us to our room for the rest of the night. Austin and I joked about the coal man and how funny it would be if the creature happened to be a small little elf on the shelf doll designed to scare the daylights out of the children who believed such a stupid story that the parents had told them. We had fallen asleep around 10 p.m. It felt like we had been sleeping for hours so long that it seemed like time was moving in slow motion. I awoke with a startle and I rushed over to Austin. Did you hear that? I asked him. Yeah. What do you think it was? Most likely the coal man. Austin had said with a laugh, annoyed I nudged him on his shoulder and replied, I'm being serious, something is on the roof. Yeah, it was probably just the wind. Austin had laid back down. Austin quickly sat right back up after hearing the second thud. This time I knew he too had been wondering if something was indeed on the roof. I bet it was Santa Claus coming to bring us presents and treats. Austin was so excited, just like in Mom's story. But I was scared and nervous because it had seemed like our mother's story had become a reality, just like she had told it. I looked at Austin with nervousness. Don't tell me that you believe Mom's story. I nodded at him. It was just a story designed to scare children into behaving. It's not real. I was about to tell him that I was not so sure anymore when we both heard a thud and some scratching noises coming from what seemed like the chimney in the living room. Austin and I slowly crept out of our room. We stopped at the staircase and gazed down in the slightly dimmed room. Austin and I slowly made our way down the stairs. I could feel my heart pounding through my chest as Austin and I made our way to the living room. We could see black dust drifting down the chimney as a shadowy black cloth gripped the outside of the fireplace. Austin and I were frozen with fear as the creature perched through the fireplace opening. Its head popped out and his bright red eyes glared into mine. He turned and looked at Austin and pulled his lips into a giant toothy smile. Austin grabbed me by the arm and we ran up to our room. Quick, in here! Austin flung open the closet door and shoved me inside. He slammed the door behind him and quickly hid behind the clothes that had been hung up the day before. We could hear the creature's footsteps slamming against the old oak floor as it made its way up the stairs. I clenched onto Austin and held my eyes shut tight. At this point, I had wished with all of my might that we had listened to our mom's story. We heard the door to our room open. I began to shake with fright as the thing got closer to the closet door. It was almost like the creature knew where we would be hiding, like it was not his first rodeo. The ultimate doom hit me like a ton of bricks. I began to cry as the closet door flew open. The creature's long black claw-like arm reached into the closet it grasped at Austin. Austin slammed his back all of the way back to the wall to avoid the creature's claw. Then the creature turned its attention to me and grabbed me by the arm. I began to scream with all of the air in my lungs. 
but my screams did me no good. The creature placed me in his giant blood-stained sack and continued to grab for Austin. I heard Austin try to fight out of the creature's claws, but it did him no good because he too was in the sack. We felt the creature begin to climb up the chimney and the cold damp air swallowed us up. He began to cry as we both realized there was no escape. It seemed like forever when we were finally released from the sack. The creature faced us as we were looking around to see where we were at in a dark cave with what looked like little elves. They all stopped and stared at us with their beady black eyes and their pointy ears. Why are they looking at us like that? Austin had said with a terrified expression on his face. Where are we? I demanded to know. The shadowy creature smiled as wide as he could and said, I'm the coal man. Didn't your parents warn you about me? The coal man said in his raspy voice. I began to shudder as I tried to reply him with an answer, but he only laughed a wicked laugh. <laughs> no matter now, you both will do great in my collection. The coal man had said with such dark intent, he began to rub both claws together as he walked closer to us. I could smell his foul breath of rotten flesh. I gagged as I tried to take a step back. You can't keep us here forever, Austin shouted as his fear began to drain away. The cold man smiled at Austin as he glanced past me to him. Oh no. And how do you suppose you will escape? Austin had no answers for the coal man, and he remained silent. What are you going to do with us? I asked with dread in my voice. Do you know why I bring misbehaving children here to my lair? The coal man had said with an evil grin, as if it took pleasure in the fact that we were terrorized out of our minds. I shook my head no. You see, every Christmas Eve, I look for the most naughty children of them all, and I bring them here. The cold man paused and looked over to his elves and smiled. The elves began to walk toward the coal man and toward us. They began to surround us. Then he looked back over to us. I bring them here to become my own personal elves. You see all of those elves around you were once misbehaving children just like yourselves. <laughs> Until I came and stole all of their essence and now they remain here for all of eternity with me. We screamed in horror as the elves grabbed us and began pushing us into a cage. The cold men shut the cage door and began to inch closer to our faces. He began to suck the air surrounding us. In horror, I could see a white mist coming from my body. I grew faint until the darkness surrounded us. I guess... We should have listened to our parents when they had warned us to behave. Because if you have guessed it now, we are now part of the coal man's elves. So you better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm warning you why the coal man is coming to town. Thank you for listening to Creep Night, and I hope you all have a merry, scary Christmas.